Hey guys, what is going on? I'm here to react to Hobbs and Shaw, The Pitch Meeting. This film was not as enjoyable as it made itself be when I was watching the trailers. And to be perfectly honest, like I discussed in the previous reaction, after the fifth one, I didn't really care much to continue on with the franchise, but because I'm already invested, I was like, why the hell not? But when the spinoff started to happen, I was like, Ugh. when I was watching this film, when I was introduced to actually being able to watch it, I was living with some people who actually loved the film. So I thought I was gonna be watching a film that was enjoyable and awesome come to find out it wasn't and I was the only one for the most part that didn't enjoy it. I'm not gonna make it seem like the film all of, in, you know, in itself is bad. It, it's hitting a certain type of people that like a certain type of comedy. I'm just not into the constant bickering and banter between people and just passing that off as comedy. After a while it started to wear on me and at first the jokes were funny but then it just got boring and then just repetitive and I was just like okay when is this film gonna end? I could definitely say though one of the highlights of the film was Idris Elba because damn it he is a highlight. But with that being said, it's really interesting. I like The Rock and I like Jason Statham. I just not enjoy them in this film. So with that being said, let's get into this. Ooh, spoilers. So, you have a Fast and Furious spin-off for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I really put in a lot of work to get into the right mindset for a script like this. Oh, you did a lot of research on cars, huh? No, I took a lot of testosterone supplements I found on the black market. Whoa, geez, okay, and that helped? It did. I feel much more manly and aggressive. My pee is a healthy shade of dark red, and I can pretty much warg at will. Oh my god. So anyway, in this oh movie, god. we're gonna focus on Hobbs and Shaw, but they hate each other, you know, so it's just gonna be constant bickering. Didn't the last movie end with them chilling at the same family barbecue all friendly-like? So do you think I should have Hobbs and Shaw just be best friends and get along the whole movie and not sling insults at each other? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Well then, I guess you should get all the way off my back about how the last movie ended. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing, you big alpha male. So anyway, in this movie, they have to go up against a dark shadow organization funded by dark money that operates on the dark web. And what's their deal? Well, I said they were dark. That means I don't have to explain a thing. Right, that makes sense. And they want to spread this virus around the world that turns people's insides to soup. That doesn't seem so bad. I mean, that's where we put soup anyway. Okay, but this would be bad, though. If you say so. So anyway, at the beginning of the movie, this bad cyborg guy, Brixton, tries to steal the virus, and this MI6 agent, Hattie, injects it into herself and escapes. Oh, Hattie, huh? What's her deal? Oh, well, she's actually the sister of Deckard Shaw, so we're gonna have flashbacks, you know, of them both as kids pulling heists together. Did you have someone in mind to play her? I was thinking we could get Vanessa Kirby. Wasn't she on that show, The Crown, about the Queen? Right, 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 that's her. I mean, that show takes place in the 1940s. Isn't Vanessa Kirby, like, 90 years old now? Well, actually, sir, period pieces aren't actually shot in the period they take place in. It's all pretend. Oh, neat. I'm learning so much at this job. Yeah, so she's, like, 30 years old. Isn't Jason Statham in his 50s, though? He is, yeah. So how can we have flashbacks of them both as children if he's several decades older than... Stop asking questions, Ryan. Don't do it to yourself. Bell like they kind of have a little bit of chemistry but at the same time not because there was a disconnect they wanted to make it seem like they were so close in age just visually looking at them you can tell there is a huge generation gap there's no way he can easily be her dad <laughs> like it doesn't even make sense not what they were trying to do at the same time it, it was kind of a fail in my opinion so on top of Hobbs and Shaw and their ish situation you got her and him and she's trying to connect with all like both of them but to me I'm just feeling everybody's trying to put together chemistry that's not really there because like I spent time watching this film faults of my own and I expected something out of it but like you gave me an unrealistic scenario where someone's supposed to be around the same age as a person that's clearly not and it's visually obvious that they're not digging deep also with her injecting herself with this virus to make herself more valuable than what she actually is gave me MI2 vibes but that's neither here or there because some people genuinely hated that film and I genuinely liked it so it gave me those vibes. I don't know, but we're gonna. Fair enough. So anyway, she only has a couple of days before this virus activates in her bloodstream and kills millions of people. Oh boy. Yeah, so then Hobbs and Shaw get recruited to work together and save the day. Who recruits them? Well, I figure we could have Ryan Reynolds come play a CIA agent. Oh, people like Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, and he's gonna be a very serious, very somber kind of character, no nonsense kind of guy. Oh, okay. I'm sweating. Even though I have the AC on, the sun is real. My back feeling like Niagara Falls doesn't even make sense. 
Okay. I'm just kidding. He's just straight up gonna do Deadpool. Oh, people like Deadpool. They do. And so how come they don't call the rest of the Fast and Furious squad to help out on this? Well, this is a spinoff, so they're not in it. Right, but they exist in this universe, right? Isn't this the kind of thing they'd help with? Usually, yes, absolutely. So we're gonna have a movie with world-ending stakes and just ignore the existence of a bunch of other heroic characters running around? Marvel gets away with it. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. They do. So anyway. And everybody at this point are superheroes. So it makes a lot of sense that he compared them to Marvel. So anyway, they have to find a way to extract this virus, but this Brixton guy is gonna give them a real hard time. He's like a supervillain. Oh, he is? Yeah, he has like live fight analytics. He's bulletproof. He has crazy good aim unless- He was the redeeming quality of this film. And not saying that his character was great. Like everybody's character was kind of ah, just watching him. It's like watching Denzel Washington in, in a film. The film might not be the best, but you know Denzel is going to deliver. And even as he's in his older age, I'm I'm still terrified that if I cross him, he will equalize me. That's what Aegis Elba is giving me. He's giving me, um, I'm older, don't get deceived. I will fuck you up and I, I'm loving it. I'm here for it. He has crazy good aim unless he's aiming at something that's important to the story. When it comes to Idris, it's just really interesting how he has a range as well. Um, he's done Tyler Perry. He's also done like action things like Takers and he's been in like a lot of different things he's also in that british show luther which actually is very good if you guys ever get a chance totally watch that show it's very impressive seeing british people do shows as opposed to americans putting british people in their films I'm telling you it's it's very interesting when you open up your brain and your mind to people that make films outside of america but I just, I feel bad for Jason Satan sometimes because I feel like he's a good actor that just gets put in mediocre films because he's good at certain things and they just try to keep to that in every film that he's in. I literally forgot my point, but hopefully it comes back to me in a minute. Very cool. Are there going to be some cool action sequences? You bet. And those were actually quite a challenge to write. Oh yeah. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to spell pew pew pew, but once I figured it out, it all went well. Oh, figuring out how to spell pew 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 is tight. It is. Yeah, thank you. So why does this Brixton guy want to spread the virus anyway? Well, he wants to wipe out weak people to improve the human race. Oh, that's not very nice. It's not, and you know, somebody tells him that's genocide, and he's like, genocide, schmenocide. <laughs> wow, that is extremely... Oh, wait, just a sec. Sorry. What did he say again, Ryan? I'm sorry. I Repeat repeat that again? Like, genocide, schmenocide. Wow, that is extremely... Oh, wait, just a second. Hello? Oh, who is it? Who's talking? Wow, well, I'll let him know. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's going on? That was Oscar, the head of the Oscars. They'd like to give you an Oscar for the best bad guy line of the past 10 years. Oh, that all sounds so specific <laughs> that it must be true. Well, congrats. Thanks. So what else happens in the movie? Well, the good guy... What? I'm sweating. Dying. better. Well, the good guys need to find this Nobel Prize winning Russian scientist because he's the one who was forced to make the virus. Oh, is it going to be tough to track him down? Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they have a photo of him holding a Russian newspaper that's only sold at one newsstand in London, and for some reason, Shaw knows this. Well, great, that is convenient. Yeah, so they go to that newsstand and find him immediately. That worked out fantastic. It did. So then they go to this big old facility in the Ukraine because there's a machine there that can extract the virus. Okay. And then there's going to be this huge climactic fight sequence and they're gonna escape just as everything's exploding around them and crumbling. Wow, well, sounds like a great set piece to end the movie. Yeah, it's certainly gonna feel like the end, but we're gonna keep going for an hour. Oh, we are. We are. So now the little machine is broken and they have to fix it. Yikes, so what do they do? Well, they're like, man, we gotta get to Samoa right now. Why do they need to go there? Because Hobbs's brother, with whom he hasn't spoken in 25 years, lives there and he's good at fixing cars. So the plan to stop this ticking time bomb... Okay, first of all, I know that he's gonna ask logical questions, but I'm gonna put my two cents in so no one thinks that I'm trying to mimic what he's saying. But if you haven't talked to someone in 25 years, but 25 years prior, you knew that they were fixing cars, why would you automatically assume that 25 years later that they would still be interested in the thing that you knew that they were interested in 25 years ago? It doesn't make sense. People change, their interests tend to change, especially if he's your brother. The likelihood of someone, I'm saying the likelihood of someone sticking to a thing for 25 years is asinine. People change interests all the time. What a leap. We're leaping a lot in this film. There's a lot of things that they do in this film that like, you want to ask the question, but you know you know better. You know you shouldn't because it doesn't make any sense. Even when I was watching the film and I knew that that was the logic behind why they wanted to go to Samoa, I was like, 
yep, sure, that makes a lot of sense. That's right. How do they even get a plane on such short notice? Kevin Hart hooks it up. That works. Yeah, so then there's going to be a second big final fight with all these Samoan people that have no guns against Brixton's little army. Man, it's going to be hard for a bunch of unarmed Samoans to take on mercenaries. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, it turns out that Brixton and his guys use guns that are hackable, so with a little bit of sexy hacking, they can't use them for like six or seven minutes. Well, great. So then... I'm sorry. I... When I hear too much conveniences in films, it really hurts my head. So of course you will go as a mercenary to a place with a hackable weapon that is clearly easily hackable to have such a precise amount of minutes that it stays hacked. Six minutes may not may sound like a long period of time, but when you're in the middle of action, it goes by really quickly. But damn it, convenience is convenient. That's all. Well, great. So then there's going to be this big thing where a bunch of cars latch on to each other and Hobbs is on the last one holding a helicopter with a chain. Oh, that is ludicrous. No, what it is, is dumb because people will assume just because the rock is really big and really strong that he can carry a helicopter. Whatever, we're in it. We're in it. Oh, that is ludicrous. No, it's Dwayne Johnson. Never mind. And then Hobbs and Shaw are gonna learn to work together and take down Brixton. Wow, 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 wow. And Hobbs is gonna be like, brother, you may have all the technology in the world, but we have heart. Oh, uh, oh, oh, what's going on? I'm oh, sorry, we gotta watch that again. Like, brother, you may have all the technology in the world, but we have heart. Oh, uh, oh, oh, what's going on? You okay? Yeah, no, it's I'm lactose intolerant, and that was a lot of unexpected cheese. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, it's just a play on words, so it'll pass. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, and maybe just try to shove some pop culture references in there so people know we're hip. I know just the thing to shove in there unprompted. One of the ups and downsides to that reveal is that I don't follow Game of Thrones, so I didn't know. But also, people told me that the last season was awful, so I dodged a bullet at the same time. Oh well. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, definitely subscribe. There ain't no point of asking questions because after a while, all the questions tend to be the same. But let me know in the comments below what you thought about this film. Let's just leave it like that. There's no point of asking too many questions because it's basically going to be the same thing as in every other video. But generally speaking, as a spinoff to Fast and the Furious, did you think it was worth your time? And if you saw it in the theater, I don't know if theaters were open around this time. Maybe they were. If you happen to spend money and watch this in the theater, do you think it was a waste of time and money? Or did you think you got your money's worth because you enjoyed everything about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be very intrigued to read what you guys think. Also, again, like I mentioned, I have a Patreon. It's going to be a fun time there. I'm going to be tackling independent films, low-rated films, films that are just a little bit cheesy. I'm also going to be incorporating very soon the It Man series as well as the Ombak series because people tend to not know the things that I'm really interested in because you see me reacting to pitch meetings, so you think I'm just all about that Hollywood life and that is not the case. I generally just enjoy watching Ryan George because he pulls out things from films that I've seen that I didn't know or realize. It also he just gives me a laugh and I enjoy laughing when I do these videos but I generally like independent, foreign films that have come out 20 years ago, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago. I'm a huge fan of it. And so in doing my Patreon, that is a thing that you guys can totally look forward to because it's going to be a great time. Also, with that being said, you should definitely check out my website. By the time this video is out, I will be in Texas. Two days before I go to Texas, I'm going to have a whole situation done. My hair is going to be done. My nails are going to be done. I'm just going to be looking like a fresh new person. And if I do it too early in advance, it's not going to be as fresh as it will be if I do it at least a day or two in advance. So that is why the wig is on. I'm sweating, but I'm doing it for you guys. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. Everything that I do, honestly, if you want to know more about me, can be found in the description bar below. You know, as far as the films that I've done, the work that I'm doing currently, it's a great time. My food travel adventures, it's awesome. 
you know, I mean, this is what people are telling me. I'm just saying, people are telling me that I'm pretty cool. I'm a pretty cool chick. If you want to know more about me, again, link in the description bar below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.